Namaste everyone. The Amazon forest is the biggest rainforest in the world. Would you believe it if I told you that the Amazon rainforest was man-made? Yes, the people who lived many years ago converted the forest around them into an edible food forest which still remains. Let us learn about the Amazon rainforest and a food forest. South America has the biggest rainforest in the world, the Amazon rainforest. It would be at least twice as big as India. Imagine that. Flowing rivers, dense trees, various flora and fauna is the Amazon's pride. Amazon was first visited by Spanish explorers who went back and told the story of a great civilization in the thick jungle who had abundant food and resources and a population of around thousands of people living in the villages. They told stories about magnificent houses and buildings. But still, nobody believed that story. Later, after a hundred years when the European explorers visited the Amazon, there was nothing. There were no buildings, no magnificent civilizations, only isolated people living in small clusters. Where did all those people disappear? Was it just a figment of imagination? In the recent times, LIDAR studies revealed a fascinating fact. Yes, there were buildings, roads, ancient structures hidden in the forest. These were remains of ancient cities which could hold thousands of people all at once. The Amazonian tribes had a motto of existence, leave no trace behind. Salvaging giant stones were also very difficult in the forest, so most of their structures were made of wood, which as we all know would eventually go back to earth. The Spanish soldiers also carried along with them epidemics and diseases like smallpox which could have killed thousands of people in a very short span of time. As they traveled through the inland rivers and canals, they would have gifted these tribes with epidemics which those poor people had no clue. They lived in communities and instead of isolating the sick and the wounded, they would gather around caring and supporting the affected ones which would eventually decline and decimate their population. The rest of the Amazonian people were stamped as uncivilized and hunted for their land and resources by the Europeans who started a genocide. After this, the remaining true Amazonians were only 2% of the original population. Some years back, in Nature Journal, an article was published which threw light into the existence of an ancient civilization with sophisticated culture and knowledge. There are structures called phytoliths in about all plants which is made up of silica. Some scientists were able to observe phytoliths from soil core samples for which the age was determined via carbon dating. These phytoliths dated back more than 10,000 years. Amazon rainforest had corn and tapioca growing there more than 10,000 years ago. Soil core samples are taken by inserting a pipe or a tube into the soil, digging it down deep and then pulling it out. The deepest layer will be the oldest, which contained remains of food crops and poultry and man-made pottery and ceramics. All these point towards one thing. The Amazon rainforest was home to a farming civilization 10,000 years ago. But how can the poor, infertile soil in the forest cater such a huge number of people? Constant rains and surface runoff left the soil too poor to grow crops, scientists believed before they discovered something in the soil. Terra Preta, the Amazonian Black Earth The most fertile soil in the Amazon rainforest Most of the places had the common poor soil around the Amazon rainforest. But scientists found terra preta soils which were much different. Sometimes these were spread around acres of land. Sometimes these were small patches of this rich black soil. There are two theories regarding the formation of terra preta soil. 
Some scientists believe that they were created by natural forces and others believe that they are purely man-made. Whatever the case is, the Amazonians who discovered them amended the soil to make it more fertile. The Amazonians were experts in amending the soil with clay particles, with ceramic particles, with fish bones and bird bones and whatever organic matter they could find, they will add to the terra preta soil to make it more fertile so that their crops and their fruit trees would grow better. Regarding the settlements, either Amazonian people structured their settlements around the terra preta or the terra preta soil was made by them near their settlements so that they could easily grow crops and bring it back to their villages. The main ingredient in the terra preta soil is charcoal. Not just charcoal, to be exact, biochar. The Amazonians grew up in the cradle of the nature. They were masters of their craft and grew their huge farms on the soil, even to this day. By designed and limited fires, they made charcoal and activated it with the remains of fish, birds and other organic matter. This continued process of adding charcoal and organic matter and broken ceramics gave rise to a microbial rich black soil, the terra preta. Now let's look at food forest. Maybe some of you are aware of this concept in permaculture gardening or sustainable agricultural methods. A food forest is defined as a collection of various plants, fruit trees and perennials which acts like a self-sustaining forest. This can also include self-seeding annuals as well. A food forest, once established, can take care of its own. It has been found out that at least 10% of the Amazon rainforest is a man-made food forest. When certain species of plants are more in number in a specific area, it is called hyperdominance. This can be seen in many places in Amazon, especially around the human settlements. Some type of hyperdominance can be natural, but in the Amazon forest, the scientists found the answer again from the soil. When they observed the soil core samples deep below, these areas had forests of cedar and hemlock in the beginning. On top of that, scientists observed ash and charcoal and then there was another layer which had plants and trees which were very diverse in nature and never seen in that area which all were beneficial to the humans. This points out to one conclusion. When humans arrived there with their knowledge and with their techniques, they transformed the area to suit their needs. But it was never a destructive blind slash and burn like they are doing it now in the Amazon forest. Instead, these forest fires were controlled and in sync with nature. Most of their ingenious methods died off with their ancestors. The remaining 2% of the population is rediscovering their ways. Their ancestors built wooden houses and lived close to nature. So as we know, they left very few traces behind. The ancient knowledge has been passed on to the new generations through paintings, songs, stories and dances. Now coming back to slash and burn practices, not of the destructive kind we have now. The Amazonians knew exactly about the chain reactions happening after a forest fire and planned them accordingly in specific areas. They knew about successive regrowth. The phenomena were after a forest fire, the plants that arose in the first year are entirely different from their successors in the second year and in the third year and so on. They knew that maintaining open areas will help them hunt in between the forest. Thus with controlled fires they made terra preta soil, planted trees and plants that benefit them in their life. We have been seeing evidences in the past years for their cultivation practices. They were not following the European monoculture as we are practicing now. They had multiple crops and fruit trees in the same area. They had about 14 different types of corn. They grew multiple varieties of a specific crop. 
These seeds were passed on from generation to generation, making these crops give better yield with the passing of time. They grew varieties of beans, tubers, nuts, oil seeds, vegetables, fruits and fibrous plants. We need to learn a lot from these eco warriors. A certain species of palm tree seen around the Amazon forest has a fruit with a weight of 1 gram. But the same species near the human settlements weigh more than 100 grams. Which means they were able to produce a good cultivar through selective breeding practices of the wild trees. But the epidemics brought on by the so-called explorers and the lust for blood and their land devastated their culture. Their people died off and their villages were reclaimed by the forest. From the peak of a glorious civilization, the Amazonian people went back to nature, went back to their jungle, because they knew it was the right thing to do. The knowledge of the jungle will always be with them, with which they can survive the harshness of the forest. Of the existing minority, most of the Amazonians have become modern. Still, there exists a group of people who still remember their roots. They still live by the code of their ancestors. There are a lot of things we can learn from them, from their farming methods and from the rise and fall of their civilizations. Our modern farming techniques, most of them are not at all sustainable, not even nature friendly or organic. We see around us that even when a farmer produces tons of a single crop, he is unable to sell it, be it potato, be it onions, be it tomatoes. He is unable to sell it or find a good price for his produce. How can we rectify this? We should try mixed cropping, permaculture methods, sustainable growing methods. In an acre of land, instead of cultivating a single crop, dig a pond grow some fishes, grow some aquatic plants, collect these aquatic plants and you can feed it to your hens, you can feed it to your livestock, you can eat or sell the fishes. The aquatic plants can also become a good compost. We can use the compost to grow different types of vegetables, different varieties of vegetables. Growing fruit trees can be done, harvesting water and harvesting energies can also be done. Set up a farmer's market and try selling its produce on your own. Try creating an ecosystem. Try creating cycles where there is no waste. Everything produced by your farm in your farm will be put to use in your farm itself. Make it a sustainable Yes, it is time for us to rethink and reinvent our ways of interaction with the society and the environment. Rather than planting shade trees on our streets, just imagine if we could plant fruit trees, our kids and the whole environment would be able to enjoy fresh delicious fruits and that too purely natural without any chemicals or pesticides. These are the things which we should look into, how to interact without destroying the nature and to reap benefits so that the future generation can enjoy the fruits of our labor. With this thought, let us embrace the knowledge of our ancestors and work towards a beautiful and sustainable and a brighter future. Thank you for watching.